Hi there, Dave here, and today I'm going to show you a GOTO 80mm telescope that I was lucky enough to get on eBay recently. Now this is the box, and as you can see, the box is very nice. This clasp is broken, but the box is very nice. And the box is extremely well designed. This is a very unusual telescope in many respects. One of the most unusual things about it is this mounting system. This mounting system is very strange. I've never seen anything quite like it. And I'll show you in a moment how it, it goes on the, the mount. It's quite unusual. So there's the telescope. Beautiful telescope. Comes featured with several interesting things. A cover. This cover. Lens cap. Uh, it's got in here, this holds 965 eyepieces of course. In here this is a collet type thing so it grips the eyepiece or the star diagonal. And I'll tilt this up so you can see what's inside here. Here we have all the goodies in there. Very nicely placed. Not only are all of them there and relatively complete, actually very, very complete. I have some uh, nice little desiccant bags and so forth. And a couple of extra goodies that I'll show you here in a minute. Okay, so here's a close-up of the mount. Or the telescope, I'm sorry, the box. With all the goodies. Here's the interesting and strange mounting system. I'll let you watch as I attempt clumsily to put this on the mount. It's a very strange kind of a thing and the experience of putting it on, I, I maybe have never figured out how to do it right. Um, so here's what's inside. This is the really cute little finder. It's diminutive, little tiny finder. It's also got a really nice, this is maybe one of the earliest dovetail type mounts for a finder. I don't think I've seen one on an older scope. They're quite commonplace now, of course. And it's a gorgeous system. It's a super good system. Here's um, some desiccant bags. Here's a declination control, right ascension control. You're not going to believe what this is. Those of you who are collectors are going to fall apart when you know what this is. These are spare latitude adjustment screws that go on the mount and you can adjust the latitude for various different latitudes. Let me show you. Let me show you a close up of that right now so you can see. Here on the mount, that's the latitude adjustment control right there. And you can see that you turn that. This has a pretty limited uh, range on it. Right now it's set at about 40, <clears throat> but the range is quite limited. And with those additional screws, you could set it, I would presume, for dang near any latitude on the planet. Look at this really cool eyepiece box. Oh, this makes a collector just very, very happy to see something like this. So here you have the, these are the original, there are actually four eyepieces, I'll show you the fourth one here in a minute. And this device here, let me pull some of this stuff out, this device here is designed to project an image into maybe a classroom or a darkened room uh, of the sun. So you would project the sun image into a darkened room. You get a nice big image of the sun, maybe a couple of feet across or something. There are some optics inside there. So it uh, basically takes the image from directly from the telescope, puts it into a room. There's a prism here. You can adjust that and turn it, of course. This is uh, the usual kind of sun filter. It's actually slightly different because this one, Goto has a strange system where you pull off the top of the eyepiece and you screw this thing on in place of it. This is very strange. This little device here is clear. It's marked clear. I'm not sure if that's original Goto. It's clearly original packaging, but I'm not sure if that's the Goto writing. Anyway, that's um, the clear filter and I believe it goes on the star diagonal when you use it as a Herschel prism. That's the only function I can figure. That's the only place I can figure it out. What you do when you're going to use this as a Herschel prism is you take these two off and put them on the other side. And then for some reason, I'm not quite sure why, you would put uh, the, clear, the clear filter on one of those. I 
Uh, let's see, I promised you another eyepiece. Here it is. This is a really nice, juicy, low-power eyepiece. This is a 40 millimeter Kellner, not dissimilar to the big Unitron. Unitron has a 60 millimeter that looks quite similar. You can't use this in the 965 focuser. It has to have its own focuser. So you can't do that. I wanted to give you a close-up of the Goto in its original packaging. This is a Goto Ortho 4mm. Collectors love this kind of thing. There's the Goto sticker on the bottom of the box. There's the Goto eyepiece. <coughs> this is uh, an Ortho, 4mm Ortho Goto eyepiece. Superb in its original packaging and so forth. Lovely, wonderful kind of a thing. Um, I'm going to show you the mount here, and then I'll let you watch as I attempt to put things together. Here's the mount. Apparently this mount was used on 4-inch telescopes. So it's a nice, big, healthy mount. The tripod is a little bit on the wimpy side. I would like to have seen a beefier tripod. It's not bad though, and what's really nice it has these feet that you shove into the ground and when you shove those feet into the ground it's really very very stable. Oh, let me show you a close-up of the setting circles. There's a nice beautiful little setting circle there. Nice declination setting circle with vernier. Here's the right ascension setting circle also with the vernier. Just beautiful. Very well machined. Very well made. Very nice. There's the worm wheel. Okay, next shot will be um, me putting this thing on. Good luck to me. Okay, here I go. See these two things? A couple of nuts here. Real pretty. I mean, this beautiful hardware here is beautiful. <clears throat> now, the trick to this is that this has to slide into a notch there. And simultaneously, these two bolts have to go through a couple of holes. How do you like that? I will never be able to do that again in a million years that quickly. Or actually, maybe I'm just getting the, the technique down. Maybe it just takes some practice. This is very cool. I love Goto mounts, some of the unusual, strange, bizarre almost mounts that they have with strange counterweight systems. This one is cool because what this is for is really a nice idea. It is that you can balance the scope by simply loosening these and moving the entire scope back and forth. Of course, uh, you know, a, a pair of rings <laughs> that you could loosen up would have worked just as well. But this is this is nice and it's a, a nice, interesting, uh, you know, collectors love that kind of weird, bizarre, quirky stuff like that. I love that about a Unitron. I love that about this Goto. Is an extremely strange little uh, counterweighting system, if you want to call it that. All right, here comes the finder. Look at this cute little pop-off cap on that. Is that to die for? I don't know about you other collectors, but I love that stuff. I'll show you what it looks like with the big honking uh, 40 millimeter. It gives you about 25 or 30 power. You have to unscrew this nifty little collet. Very much, very analogous to a Unitron. Except this collet. Oh, that is cool. That is very, very cool. Here's the big, beefy 40 millimeter. Okay, so there, there's that. Now I've got, uh, I've already set the counterweight to approximately the right place. Uh, another thing I love about this telescope is the, uh, the clutch mechanism here is really, really nice. It's not just a screw pushing against the, the shaft there. It's uh, probably, I'm almost sure, it's something uh, clutching together and squeezing it because the clutch mechanism on the, on the, draw, on the uh, right ascension and declination motion is beautiful, butter smooth. And you can clutch it down to just the right tension really, really nice control over the amount of tension. So you can change that. 
make it so that you can easily move the telescope around wherever you want and then the slow motions will still operate uh, as long as it's well balanced or close, even close to being well balanced. Okay, so I love that thing. I love, just love that to pieces. One of the reasons I like to do these videos is because for those of you who are collectors, I'm a collector, for those of you who are collectors, still pictures don't tell the story, not well enough. Uh, you can really get a sense of what's going on here. I put it together, I'm going to move it around. Still pictures just don't give you that, that sensation. So uh, I, that's why I really like to do these videos instead of posting up a bunch of still pictures on a, on a website. Uh, now you can see that this is very nice, very smooth, and I've clutched it kind of loose, right? See, I've got it pretty loose there. I mean, it's pretty darn loose. That's a little too loose because then, if I want to, I just clutch it down a little bit. Now, the right ascension is very nice and it'll hold, unless there's bad wind or somebody that bumps into it or something. Um, it'll hold just fine. And it'll track just fine. Apparently, the 4-inch telescopes came with a clock drive that was housed in here. I would love to have that. I don't think it ever came with the, the 80 millimeter scope, but the, I would love to have the clock drive to go in there. Okay, here's a close-up of the the knobs. I saw a comment from one guy online that he really likes knobs. I don't blame him. Look at these. These are beautiful. Look at that. That's chrome there. These are beautiful. These are things of just artistic pieces of beauty. Look at this. The fit and finish here is just gorgeous. This little finder here. How many times do you see a cap on a finder? Here's, if I can lock this down, here's how you focus the finder. It's a little stiff. It's focusing the finder, focusing the crosshair. Cool, cool. You can increase the tension on the focuser if you want. Very, very cool. Very, very nice telescope. Here are the clutches. And I don't know if you can, I wish you could feel that because because it, you can see, I'm starting to engage, it's starting to engage even right about there, just lightly. And then you go quite a ways, fully tight is all the way over here, but you're fine anywhere in this range here. So you've got a real nice, I don't think I've ever experienced another mount with that kind of um, superb mechanical feel to it. That's just, it's just wonderful. Okay, I wanted to give you a comparison between the Goto mount that came with my 80 millimeter scope and a couple of Unitron mounts. This is the mount, this is the Goto mount, the greenish one. By the way, it's a lovely color of green. I don't know what it looks like to you in the camera, but it's to me quite beautiful. Uh, this is, of course, the classic, elegant Unitron 4 inch mount. And I think if you look at them carefully, you'll see that the Goto is quite comparable. The size of the shafts, the basic beefiness of the mount, and the weight of the mount are quite comparable. The uh, size of the, the gears and setting circles are very comparable. But compare that now with the Unitron 3 inch, and you see a huge difference. I hope you've enjoyed my tour of this Goto 80mm telescope. Thank you very much.